Hi guys, afternoon to you. It's um, just gone 12 o'clock, so um, I'm here. Happy New Year to you. Um, hope you're having a good start to 2018. I'm still trying to sort of get back on my feet from my cold that I had um, for all of um, December, end of November, December last year. I'm still struggling a bit with the cough. So especially with talking um, on Facebook Live today, I might end up coughing a bit. So bear with me. I've got my Barocca to keep me going um, and help me help get me through this. OK, so today um, we are or I'm going to cover um, GDPR. Now, um, this has become a regulation. And the reason I'm, I'm covering this is that I do believe that within our businesses, you know that's why I become a business mentor is because a lot of therapists have asked me how have I kept going how do I do what I do um, asking me for help with Facebook with MailChimp with advertising with marketing etc etc and it's all about working on your business but I also believe in regulations in that we run our business you know we've trained professionally to be professional with our therapies but we should also be uh, professional with our business so I heavily believe in trying to do everything right so that's all about the music license that's previously been about the data protection and other other such things so a lot in my training I cover that and over the last couple of months um, there's been a lot of things have been going out about GDPR I originally wanted to run this in December but again, with my cold, I couldn't talk for long. Um, so it was a problem. So I wasn't able to cover this. And that's why it's been delayed until this month. <clears throat> Here we go. Um, but this is why I wanted to cover this now, because um, there's lots going on on the Internet, um, on Facebook, uh, people blogging about it. And I really wanted to try and square things up because this is a hot topic at the moment. And with talking to a lot of therapists and seeing a lot of therapists, there's some that's asking me lots of questions about it, and there's some that don't even know it, know it at all. When I ran my last um, FHT uh, local support group meeting in Worthing in November, when I asked the therapists there, do you know about GDPR? Have you heard about GDPR? And I mostly got blank looks. So that's why I'm now running a meeting in March to talk about GDPR, GDPR to the attendees, to the um, FHT members and other therapists there. Um, it's why I've decided that I'm going to run a webinar next month so I can go into more detail about it. Because this is bite-sized learning, I don't want to drone on for you about it too much. Um, I just want to try and keep it as simple as I can. So welcome to Ali's Therapy Academy. I am Alison Brown or Ali um, and I've been running this since 2013 but have been a complementary therapist since 2000. So I'm now into my 18th year as a therapist um, and welcome to this bite-sized learning today. So what is GDPR? G excuse me, I'm going to keep reading my notes because this is trying to sort of remember everything. GDPR is General Data Protection Regulation. This um, replaces, this is already in place. It's becoming enforced um, on May the 28th. This will now, this will be enforced. But this is already in place, um, this GDPR. It replaces the Data Protection Act. I've often talked about um, making sure that you're covered for the data protection because of all the information that we collect. Even though um, if you fill out the, like, the assessment form on the ICO pay, on the ICO website, a lot of you are doing it on paperwork. It says that you don't need to be covered because it was more for digital. But my answer to that is the way we work with our telephones, the way that we work with our tablets, our smartphones and our tablets these days and recording of videos, etc., that you were better safe than sorry um, than was to have the data protection cover put in place. It's like an insurance for you and your clients. It was like a, you know, it was like um, a law then. 
and you were paying £35 a year for that. And it was just, you know, it was just £35 for the whole year. This is now become a regulation that you have to do this if you take um, any um, data or any information. So this immediately involves us as therapists because not only are we taking name, address, telephone number and everything else on our consultation sheets, but if you're running a salon and you have employed staff, then even if that's the only information you have is name, address, but also the contact information, but also the national insurance information, anything like that, then you have to be GDPR compliant. And this is the word. It is a regulation, but you have to be compliant. So let's have a look at this and see what this really involves. So what this does is this tightening up the rule on how we collect and store data. So this is hopefully going to stop all the spam phone calls that you get. It's hopefully going to stop all the spam emails that you get. It's going to stop the cold calling. This is what this is trying to do and tighten up. Now, this will, it's an EU regulation that uh, Britain has signed up for, but this will still be in place even though with Brexit. Even though we've got that, that will still be in place. There might be a few tweaks to it, but it is for the good of us that we have got this regulation. So as, so as customers, as consumers, this is great because we have a right to our information. We also have a right to be removed. But as a business, this is where we have to now look at it and tighten up what we do. Because what this means is that we have to be transparent and super, super can't even say the word, super specific. And I'm saying this all slowly because I'm used to babbling so fast. I'm saying this so slowly is to make sure that I get the words out clearly and that I'm going to try and make as much easy, as nice and simple as I can. So it's got to be transparent, specific and super simple in what you are, information you're taking and why. As I said, I can see this is a hot topic. I've got loads that are coming on this call today. So it might end up being longer than I originally planned. But if you've got any questions, do come and ask in the comments while you're here. <clears throat> so where before we've always we collect the consultation forms and I'm hoping that some of you then would also ask for email information. Oh, thumbs up. Thank you. Um, that we'd also ask for email information because we put them onto our database to send them newsletters. Now, when I've always filled in my consultation forms and I have with my clients and still do with new clients, I always say to them, email information, and I normally get it. Then at the end, I say to them, I send out um, monthly newsletters with health and tech tips, health benefits and tips to help you look after yourself in between treatments. Would you like to receive that? Then they tell me yes or no. That's when I know then whether to add them to the my MailChimp database. I have a database that I keep with all my clients' information on because that's, if anything happens to their client's notes or whatever, I've still got their contactable information. But if they're happy to receive the newsletter, then I move them then onto my child MailChimp list, which is my um, email marketing um, list, so that they can receive the newsletter. Now, I've always asked before, with this, this is where you're actually then, remember when you filled out things that you have to untick if you don't want to receive information? You now have to tick. It's getting that consent. It's not allowing, it's not the people having the opt out. It's you now have to give them the opt in. So what this is also recording um, and what you have to be aware of is that this is not just for emails. This is, um, sorry, I'm just looking at my list that I've got here. This is also um, including telephone, text, emails, post 
and like your event lists things like that so this is including everything that you do that you're keeping information on so even if it's your consultation form you're filling all that in about your clients but you have to on your consultation forms now and i think this is the best way because you have to record keep a record of the information that you're keeping but also letting your client know why exactly you are keeping this information why you're keeping it and how long for so great for us with our consultation forms but in that you can put on there that the reason why you're keeping it because it's for them um for it's to work with them holistically that you're keeping the notes so you've got an information so that you can look at the whole thing be aware of them as a whole and that you can work and prepare the better treatments for them or better services for them better therapies for them look at your wording um, but also that it's medical malpractice like if you're with the FHT as your medical malpractice that in future you may you know have a, a challenge come up that we have to keep it for an extra three years after their last appointment we have to keep the notes so that goes also onto your consultation form that your clients need to be aware of if you are also offering anything like a newsletter or you want to keep in touch with them by phone or by text or by email anything like that you know how now have to tell the client ask the client and get them to tick on the consultation form or somewhere it can't just be a yes that's fine they actually you actually have to have proof that they are agreeing and consenting for you to contact them by phone by post um, by text by email if they may say to you oh yes i'm happy by email but I don't want to hear anything of it any other way. You have to allow that on your consultation form. You have to keep a record of when that was done. Okay, because some of us I know um, might text out cancel, you know, a late cancellation. Do they want that? Some of us might text out a um, special offer. I know I do for St David's Day. I send out a special offer for a week, and I just text that offer out. Um, and I know some of my clients don't want that. They don't want to be notified by text. Some of them do. Um, it also might be that it's the way you work. And I know very much that I work mostly by email, by message, um, Facebook message, email, and texts. So that's the way I work. Well, that's fine when you're contacting for agreeing with appointments and stuff. But if it's marketing, you have to make sure they're happy with that. But also, um, it is still being a record of, of what they're consenting to. Okay, it's this is. I mean, this is where you might feel it becomes a bugbear, but it should really be in a way what we're already doing, that we're already um, collecting this information um, and holding this information. Also, just think about how you feel. That you you know you get these phone calls you get these tests texts you get these emails it can be quite annoying but it gives you the option then to unsubscribe from it it may be that our clients don't like to hear um, from us in a certain way well then this is the option now where before that they could unsubscribe to it or ask you now um, they have to subscribe to it you can't just add them to any of your lists you have to be very transparent I'm very, very open on what you're doing. Um, so you also have to keep a record of how people opt in. So this is the same when you're doing a consultation. When you're getting their signature, the date is also put in of when they've come to you. <coughs> Excuse me, this is where it starts. <coughs> this is where it comes to you so that you are writing in there of their first appointment on their consultation of what date and what time they're there so that is your proof your initial proof yes that they've made an appointment with you yes that they've seen you but that's your proof of when they've when they've come to see you 
and then you're going to have the follow on from that on your consultation forms of whether they're going to go on a newsletter, whether they're going to be happy to be contacted by text, email, post, whatever. Now, the reason I'm also saying post is that we don't have to get permission, I believe. Now, the thing I also want to make clear, I'm not an expert. I'm not a lawyer. Um, and, you know, all the information I'm gathering and sharing with you today is information I found by research, by attending Federation of Small Businesses meeting about GDPR, but the information I've picked up are from the ICO website and um, other information that I found that I've been gathering to learn for myself. I also know that the Federation of Holistic Therapists have an article about this in their magazine coming out this month. They're covering more on the GDPR. But um, you can also check with the ICO, their website, for information on this. And they have a 12 step that you can put in place to make sure that you're being covered. But I'm just been trying to find information as a therapist on how that we can cover ourselves and make sure that we're compliant. But I don't want anybody coming back on me going, oh, but Al, I'm just doing what I can find. Please also find out for yourself and your own interpretation. So <clears throat> what we're looking at here is that if you also send out newsletters to people, so you've got your consultation, you're finding people out, that's it, that's why I was going back on, was the post. Don't, we don't have to have permission to send them a Christmas card or a birthday card, okay? That is just, we're sending that as goodness. And if that's all we're sending, if we add um, uh, a voucher to it, if we add a newsletter to it, if we add even where I always promote lumpy mail, anything like that, that is all marketing purposes. Unless you have permission, you not, cannot put those things in the post to them. This is where it can be a bit unsticky for marketing, um, where I know, like I said, I always recommend sending lumpy mail and I always recommend, um, you know, sending different things in the post, sending a voucher for the post through birthday card and whatever. But this time before you send anything out like that, I believe on what I read into it is that you have to get permission first. That's when you do the consultation. Would you be happy to hear from me by mail, by text, by phone, by email? You get the permissions first before you send anything out. Before you do any marketing process, you have to get permission first and have the proof that you've got permission. So you can do all that on a consultation form. If you send out newsletters, if you send out freebie signups, anything like that. So um, hopefully, you know, you do send out a newsletter to your clients um, or maybe an email newsletter or maybe you are sending out, um, like I said, like a sign up for um, a freebie. You know, you leave your email address and you get that download. Now, nine times out of 10, you know that you've been put on a database on their database. So it's like a, it's like date building a database. Again, it's another one of those things that I always mention and <clears throat> put down as one of your marketing pillars. If you do that, again, you now have to be transparent and openly clear about what you're going to do with their with their information. So if they sign up um, for your freebie download, if they sign up for your PDF document. You do then, instead of automatically adding them to a list, you then have to send them. So maybe in that thank you email where you've got, um, here's your download. You know how also have to put in there and say to them, if you would like to receive more information from me to be kept up to date on any offers or anything that's been happening or receive health hints and tips, please sign up to receive the monthly newsletter. So you've got to give them a link to send them to sign up on the form. So like on MailChimp, <clears throat> if you can do this through your website, you'll know how your, work, your website works better. If you're using like WordPress and plugins, um, that you've got a website form that somebody fills in that gives you proof. I know within MailChimp that I use 
that they've got a, um, a form there that they fill in and then MailChimp then stores that. So you've then got proof of what they, that they signed up through that, when and what date. You also get then a confirm, or I also then get an email confirmation to show that they've um, sent these consents through. Okay, so that's how you would do that. So you've got to let them know they've got to make that decision if they want to sign up for it. You cannot now automatically add them to um, the list. They have to sign up for themselves. You don't have, you can't add them and then they take themselves off. That's not compliant. What it is, is they have to add, they have to add and add to it themselves. Same with anything like Eventbrite, if you've got running any workshops, any talks, anything like that, and people sign up for your database, you cannot automatically add them to the list. When you send them that link, when you send them your ticket, you can also put on there, if you'd like to be kept up to date with more information on what's happening, what offers, blah, 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 you would put that with a link for them to sign up. Now, what you may have also found, noticed recently, is that anything that you've signed up for, you might start receiving reconsent emails. This is just the ones that are re-asking you if you still want to stay signed up. This is them becoming compliant with the GDPR. So this is your opportunity now to tidy your list. Um, where you may have been running out for a few years, you may have a couple of hundred on your list, and you may find that only half of them or less than half are reading your emails. What's the point of having a big list if half of them aren't reading it? So this is your chance now, and don't do it once, keep doing it a few times, either once a month or twice a month up until May, you send out an email or as part of your email, you put in there, please, if you want to keep receiving this, um, reconsent, you know, recons uh, please give me reconsent to keep sending you this information. Because then when it comes down to it from the 28th, if you've still got a number of people that are not opening their emails, you can send them one last email to say, with a big, you know, headline, <clears throat> If you want to keep sending my emails, open this one because you need them then to reconsent. Because if they're not, you can then cross them off your list. And if they want to find out from you, you have to um, they have to resign and go through the form. This also happens for your clients. You've got clients that have filled in and you've got the you've got their consent on the form. Those that you haven't got consent form, they've just verbally said yes. You've now got to ask them, um, you know, do you still want to receive this email? Do you still want to receive the newsletter? So you can clear your therapy list. Um, so it's a great way of doing consent lists. So I'm going to be talking more about this on the webinar. I'm just trying to sort of cover the simple, you know, the basics here. So again, all records, you also have to notify your clients how long you'll be keeping their records for. So for medical malpractice with the FHT, if, <clears throat> if you are, oh, excuse me, I'm going to have to have a sip of my drink. You have to put the information there on the consultation form and also on your legal information on your website. You should have a page on your website that covers all your legal things. In there, you will also put about the GDPR. And it notifies your clients how long you are keeping their notes for. So with FHT malpractice, you will be keeping notes for three years after their last appointment. OK, that's how long. I always thought it was a lot longer, but apparently it's three years um, for keeping you know, the notes after their last appointment. Now. I don't know what the answer is there. This is what I have still have to investigate with the ICO and to find out. What happens after three years? Can you just shred it? Do you just delete it? Or do you actually hand physical notes over to your client because it's their notes? Do you get in contact with your client after three years saying, do you still want to receive the information? Or do you get rid of all their notes and but still keep emailing them? This I'm not sure of, and this is information that I have to find out. I also am not sure whether GDPR have got everything actually in place by May, 
but I really want to make sure that we've got and we know what that we're, what we're doing. So when it comes to three years after their appointment, we are not legally bound to keep the notes. Then the notes then have to go, as I said, delete, shred, or um, give them to the client. And then if they come back after three years, we have to make them fresh new notes. <clears throat> yeah, this is a for us. We have to look into this again. It might be something that we need to check with the ICO to find out whether we can keep them longer or whether we don't, whatever. Also, when it comes to shredding, is it OK for us to shred? And do we just then make a note that we've shredded it? Or do we have to actually give it to a proper company that does the shredding? So it's all officially been recorded. It might that might be going into too much in depth with it. I don't know. But as I said, this is, is an 88 page document on ICO on the ICO page to find out about the regulations. So there's a lot of lawyers that are trying to find out in the information. I wouldn't go worrying about paying for somebody to do it for you because it can be a lot, there's a lot of scaremongering going on at the moment. So you just really want to make it as simple as possible. It's all according to how deep um, that you're going into it because it will even affect um, if you run groups, not Facebook groups, but if you run live groups on the information that you are keeping about people on live groups, how did you get them to accept to receive an email from them? How you invite them? Have you got recorded proof? So again, this is all more that I'm going to go through on the webinar because I've already been on you now for 30 minutes and we're just touching, you know, the edges of it. But the main things that I want you um, to be aware of is consultation forms is to make it transparent, readable and make the client aware that they have to sign and then they have to tick or acknowledge that how they want to receive information from you. So that's on your consultation form. Also making them aware of how long you keep the notes for. Also, then make that information available on the website. So, again, clients are made aware of what the information is for. This is all about transparency and being specific. So people know what the information is being taken for and what is happening to it. It's to stop all this selling of information or list buying, anything like that. It's to stop all this. So this is why this is being brought in. Um, this is a chance, as I said, is to clean your lists, to find out who's still interested, who are not. Um, it's a way of doing that. Um, so I'm just reading through my notes to making sure I'm covering everything that I needed to um, within this today. So <clears throat> if the companies you're using, like MailChimp, if you're hosting information in the cloud, make sure that they are all EU compliant. So if your stuff's being hosted in America, if they're, if they're hosting your information in America, and I mean, say you've got your client's notes are in the cloud, like Dropbox, or um, your um, therapist software that you're using to hold client's notes or booking things up or taking any information, whatever that is hosting, if it's hosted in America, move it because there's different rules and regulations there, move it to the EU. Um, MailChimp, Dropbox, they're all becoming compliant, EU compliant. So they're all coming into this GDPR. Um, they're all coming into that. So just make sure that you're looking at that. Um, and I think that's everything that's covered that we needed to. So just to let you know, the webinar I will be running is on Wednesday, the 21st of February at 10 a.m., I'll be running a webinar. I've just got to create um, a link up to that, set an event up, put all the extra information I need on there in case you want to receive any more information from me if you sign up for the webinar. But I'll go more into depth in this. But keep looking, keep researching. The, I, the ICO are there for you to answer any questions. As I said, they have a 12 points leaflet that um, information that you can read. I will keep sharing stuff in here. I've already shared quite a bit about the GDPR already. Um, 
but it's basically making your clients aware <clears throat> of what you're doing with the information and also getting permission um, consent for you to send them information if you want to keep in touch with them um, so that's basically um, it about GDPR so that I don't want to overwhelm you but I really want to make you aware that this is taking place that this will be enforced um, from from May the 28th so there's no cost to this like we were paying 35 pound a year for, for Data Protection Act there's no cost for this because it's law it's a regulation you have to be compliant so there's no bury in your head in the sand. There's no, oh, it doesn't include me. There's no hiding from this. We as a small business have to be in compliant and have to take part in this. We have to get our records straight and available and upfront. Also, that our notes are available for the for our for our clients. If they want our notes or want to see our notes, they can see them. And you have a month to comply to that to let them see the notes. So these are the things that we are um, going through. Um, just a note there, I've got there. Yeah, go into the legal terms. So that's it. I hope that's helped. Hope that's given you a bit of understanding. But my main purpose today was to make you aware of it. Check out with your organisations. As I said, I know the FHT are doing something. I don't know whether the booty organisations are covering it. I don't know. So I shall be. Um, chatting to other therapists, chatting to other group admins um, and seeing if they've got enough information. If you want to share this, please do to other organisations, to other groups that you may know of, to other therapists that may not know about the GDPR, making other people aware. By all means, do use this if you want to share or certainly let other people know about the webinar. Um, that's taking place on the 21st. There's nothing there on my Facebook page or on my website because the date's only been confirmed this morning. So um, the information and all that has still got to go out there. But you've got, you know, you can start putting things in place, start contacting your clients, start contacting your list and start just making, putting all the records and making sure everything is up to date. As I said, because it is in place now, but it won't be enforced until the 28th of May. So it's just making sure that you've got everything there. But as I said, I'll cover more in February. So I hope that helps. Um, as I said, not many questions have come through or any questions have come through, but I've had quite a few people on the call today, on the, on the <coughs> uh, live stream today. So it's lovely to see you on here. Um, and good luck with sorting it all out. As I said, it's, it's, it, we first look at it, it's a nightmare, but actually, once you sit down, you will find you are doing a lot of it already. Um, it's just a case of that some old clients that you may have, you just might have to get them to reconsent so you've got proof. That's all. It's just everything is dotting the I's and crossing the T's and it's getting proof and having it all recorded of what you're doing and what, you, what you've done with the information and what you're doing. So that's it for me. I will catch up with you again soon. Um, as I said, just trying to get back into the role of working again after two weeks off and dealing with this. <clears throat> so I will catch up with you again soon. Hope you've all had a great week. Have a super weekend and I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye all. Bye.